would you say somebody like myself, if I were to file a claim and I did not have the financial means to have somebody defend me or represent me, um, do you notice a, a fairness or an equalness between somebody representing themselves and somebody who has representation? I believe that the, all the judges I know um, and that I've seen, and not just that I work with now, but judges that I've seen in my 20 years. Look, I've seen some judges make mistakes along the way. Um, the system isn't perfect. We are humans. Um, but judges are supposed to take the bench and put their personal opinions, values aside. Um, it's definitely more difficult to represent yourself, even in the best of circumstances. Um, and that's where I think the judges come in and being fair, because they can't give you legal advice, but they can make sure that the other side, or even if it's another person representing themselves, which we call pro se litigants, may know more. Um, sometimes you have pro se litigants who are actually attorneys representing themselves. So the job of the judge is to make sure that you're sitting there and that the laws and the rules are applied fairly. And it, yeah, it's, it's definitely more difficult. And I'm, there have been situations where outcomes may not have always been the fairest they could have been. I plan on, if, if elected, to do the best that I can to make sure that every case, look, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. So somebody's no one's ever going to walk out 100% happy, or maybe they will, but it's rare. Um, what I've done working in the system and what I plan on continuing doing as a judge is making sure that the fairest, most just outcome happens, that can happen. And again, not everybody can win all the time, but it's important that they're heard and that the facts are presented and that the judge is willing to listen to both sides and then apply the law fairly. It, the law has to be applied, but that doesn't take away compassion and fairness and honesty. So I think that's the most important thing. I think compassion, what you just said, is something that I hope everyone can get from this, is that you really truly have that in your voice and in your talking about this. And it's sort of been an eye opener for me personally to say, oh, this is really important. Um, so last question, I guess, would be what would you tell somebody or why should somebody vote for you to be civil court judge? Because of all the things I've said. I Look, I'm, I'm married. I have a 12-year-old daughter. I'm a working mom. Um, my husband wor you know, works. Um, now, during the COVID crisis, he is unemployed. I understand you know, this time, especially now, I think the court system is going to be overrun when things are back up and running. The court system is just going to be inundated with civil court cases, people with creditors and debtors and landlord and tenant and a myriad of things. And the laws are the laws. And sometimes it's going to be hard. It, you know, it's going to be hard. Um, and being a mom and learning how and, and doing what I do I truly do have compassion for people. I, you know, it's, it's not easy. I, I grew up here in Bayside. I played in this park. Like I said, I went to Sacred Heart. I went to Cardoz. I grew up in this area. It's a great area to grow up in. Um, you know, my father was a working guy. He was a bartender for years. My mom was a secretary. We lived paycheck to paycheck. Um, I went to law school at night, worked full time during the day. I've had a full time job since I just about graduated high school. I had to help pay the bills. I'm not saying that I lived an, a, a very unprivileged life. Um, I had a lot more privileges than others. I, you know, I am thankful for the things that I had, but I can also say that I know what it is to live paycheck to paycheck. And I know what it is to worry about if you're going to have enough money to pay the mortgage next month and make sure that your child gets to go to school or um, whatever it may be. And I think I can take that and knowing what I know from growing up in this county, which is the most diverse county in the world, um, working within the system, working for domestic violence victims, doing civil litigation, working in the court system, seeing how the court system works, seeing the, where the inequities may or may not be and trying to fix them. I think all of that makes me the right candidate for it because I have the experience, I have the knowledge, I have the compassion and the fairness to do it and to do it with respect for every individual that comes before me. I would treat everybody the way I'd want to be treated, the way I'd want my family, my friends, and my loved ones to be treated. Because we're all part of this community and everyone deserves it.
Well, one part about this conversation that's really, I guess, touched me is that you are very relatable. Thank you. <laughs> and I think that that's really important to not be intimidated yeah, by, <laughs> well, of course it's the mask, but to not be intimidated <laughs> by, you know, somebody with such a high up title or to feel, you know, scared of. You're a, a real person at the thank end of the you, day. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're so that's welcome. That's what I strive to be. <laughs> And that is wonderful. But thank you again. Thank and you. it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank and because of this, I will go home and I will do all my due diligence and research and get my, get my peers out there and, and make a difference and, and do what's right. And let's, uh, thank you very much. let's make I a change. It. And good luck with the new position. Thank you so much. I'm sure I'll be seeing you on Big Side Lab. I hope to be seeing you as well. Thank you.